previously on Reading Between the Lines with Tandaman. I think earnings are a key. I went to Vegas for the uh, the hackathon and uh, I'm part of the Upland Dev Network. It's a great idea. They had a contest where you were to do, uh, I think, a video and then that you uploaded your video to them and then they put it into your building. And it was a feature that we thought like, like oh, the, this is how like the new Upland is going to be. Like you're going to be able to, to go visit somebody's property and like you know, walk into their house and see like this awesome 3D interactive. And I don't know if that's supposed to be coming with like the, the 3D uh, with the, the third party dev tools or, or what, but um, I would like to see more 3D metaverse interactivity. Right now we're already um, the, that 3D decor is already starting to make its way onto people's properties right now. Um, so I, I, I think we're in the infancy of, of people getting their ideas in, into the platform right, right now. On layer one, that, it might be tough to find the value, but I think in layer two, the, the value is extraordinary for that type of, I think they're kind of starting to get in a position where their hands are becoming tied with their user base. I, I think they've got to make sure that they're engaging with their user base the way it is right now. Um, I think that I think some of what that thinking in my mind goes toward is the growth in the future. Um, yeah, definitely. I think with all the new startups and projects that come out of Upland, more and more people get attracted to it. And not only through the Upland ad, ads directly, but also through the, the new startups and the new communities. Maybe they invite friends to hang out with them in the discord or in the communities and that's how they learn about upland and maybe start playing too i think the most important for a platform like this is to actually make the, the entrepreneurs playing the game make money because that will also attract new people why upland it's great it's fun the community open source i would say god sasu I always see him help players out in the community all the time. Yeah, with the increasing um, applications of Spark, I don't think it's a Spark uh, inflation because you always need more Spark to build bigger things. All right, welcome back to season two. It's been a pleasure. Happy 2023. Uh, today I have with me someone who's been around the industry for a while. Shubham Huda, he's the head of exchange at CoinSwitch Kuber. It's great to have you with us, sure. Hey, hey, thank you. Thank you, Dan, for uh, having me here. Uh, pleasure speaking with you. Absolutely. So Shubham, a lot of people know who you are. You're famous enough uh, within the industry. But for the folks that don't know you, why don't you give us a brief introduction about yourself? Sure, sure. Um, uh, it's really, really generous of you to say a lot of people know me. Um, uh, there are a few few people I, I really, you know, um, there are there are a lot of people that I really respect in this industry, and I'm just starting off my journey. Uh, even though I've been in the industry for five years now, um, you know, I I would say I'm in the industry for five years because I purchased my first Bitcoin back in 2017. Um, I've been working in CoinSwitch for the last seven eight months. Uh, I'm leading the exchange here. Um, what I mean by that is we just built our own exchange, CoinSwitch. Uh, Kuber was a broker app. Now we have our own exchange where people can trade their crypto against INR exclusively. Um, there is, we are the first exchange in India who are just, uh, you know, creating a INR denominated market uh, without the need of uh, switching to USDT and then to INR. Um, so really glad to be a part of India's blockchain revolution. So, yeah. Absolutely. So Shubham, you were born near Jodhpur. You have lived in Jaipur and now you live in Bangalore. Yeah. Why don't you give us a brief introduction about your educational and your professional background? Sure, sure. 
so um, I, I actually hail from a very small town. Um, I, I was born and brought up in Pali, Rajasthan, which is a very small town near Jodhpur. I'm sure most of the people don't even know about what, where Jodhpur is, right? Um, I, I studied there till class 10. I came to Jaipur in 11th, uh, did my, you know, tried to uh, prepare for engineering, got into NIT Jaipur in computer science, which is a really prestigious thing for, for a kid like me. Um, I, but uh, to be honest, when I came to college, I realized the real world is really different what your parents have taught you. Uh, for, as a child, I was never exposed to money. Money was a very foreign concept to me. And uh, I, I now I realize as an adult that a lot of people still struggle with money. Uh, you know, it's not just a problem of a child. It's people people still struggle about money people don't know what money can do why money exists and i think that was the first and core fundamental reason why i'm so bullish about cryptocurrency as an industry is because crypto right now is redefining how money works like it's like living in 1800s where stocks came into the picture for the first time it's like living even back in time when there were no banks and you are for the first time in the world realizing how the financial system works and we are sitting at the cusp of a path breaking technology we are still so early in cryptocurrency technology that even now if you start learning about this you will thank yourself your kids your grandkids will thank yourself that you know uh, they are so grateful to have you uh, this generation as their fathers and forefathers so so yeah i i i went to nit jaipur as computer science graduate but when i came out i went to futures first as a derivatives trader i took a leap of faith in my career because i was good at maths and uh, in college i realized i am actually might not that kind of a guy who just sits on his laptop and course the entire day i like to talk to people i uh, to be honest like i I recharge myself from other people. Like, you know, while talking to you right now, the energy in your eyes, I will just resonate the same energy. If if I'm talking to someone and they are happy, I'll be, I'll make you happier. If you're sad, maybe I'll make you a lot sadder. That's that's where I dwell in. So I, you know, I ditched my computer science degree. I tried something new. I went to futures first to trade. And when I went to futures first, I realized, you know, what money is. I had never seen money in my entire life. For the first time in my life, I'm getting a salary. And with that salary, I'm getting a power that within a click of a button, I can buy and sell tens of thousands of dollars, which was, which was really amazing for me, you know, as a kid who had never seen how money works. Now he's saying, okay, this is where most of the money in the entire world is made and lost. This is the only place. So if you are really passionate about making money, if making money is your only goal in your life, you must learn how to trade. That's the only thing. If you're doing anything else, if you're believing you, you'll do a good job, you'll, you know, save your salary, invest in things that is good that, but that is what an average people, average person would do. If you really want to do great things in your life with money, you have to become a good trader. And that doesn't just, I'm not just talking about, you know, trading in the financial markets that trading can be done in, 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 in business as well. Right? Like I can probably buy uh, gold coins and sell it to someone else at a higher price. That's also trading. You must learn how to trade. Uh, futures first was a great journey for me, but uh, in seven, eight months that I spent there, uh, the, the energy that I get from people from my social life that was gone. I was working from 2 PM in the day to 1 AM in the night. Um, you know, that I was working in the Canadian, the, the Montreal exchange TMX that used to be, you know, at that time zone. I, you know, soon started to lose friends. I started to lose girlfriends and that started taking a toll on me. I thought, okay, maybe I'm not doing, uh, you know, great in my personal life, but this is not what I want to do. This is, uh, you know, not creating a balance in my life, which I would have loved. Uh, so as a, I would say as a teenager, I, as a kid, I was not a teenager. I was 21 back then. I, I, I left my job. I, I went to filmmaking again, which I was doing in the college. In, I did that for one year. I made a lot of videos and that's why, uh, Dan, I have a lot of respect for you because I know how hard it is, uh, for, you know, creating videos. It's, it doesn't give you a lot of money. You need a lot of passion. You need to be there for a lot of years. I did that for a year. Uh, soon I ran out of money. My bills started speaking up for me. I did not want to go back to my parents and, uh, you know, because I had no money with my parents as well. Uh, my parents are like well to do, but they never used to give me any money back then. So I, I started teaching maths to people because I was good at it. Then I started selling by juice tablets to people. Uh, and that was like one of the lows of my career. I soon left that job. 
I again started working hard. I, I disciplined myself, got a job at a startup here in Bangalore at nobroker.com, which is a you know non uh, web three company for sure. But what it helped me do was then I started to do that average thing. I started investing my money in cryptocurrencies. To this to this date, like I'm not sure if it's a very good thing or bad thing to do. I've never bought any stock, any mutual fund in my life. All of my money is in crypto. Uh, it might be stable coins. It might be stable returns there, but I've never bought anything else in my life. I, I started doing that. I started influencing people around me that, you know, why this technology is so great. Uh, I, I started, so there was always a little of, bit of a teacher in me when I, when I said, you know, I was teaching people maths, right? So I started showing people how great this technology is, where they are standing in, in terms of, you know, the broader scheme of things, if they zoom back and look at, you know, a hundred year timeline, you people are not, people are still not realizing that where they are standing in, in terms of the technological breakthrough, in terms of the financial technological breakthrough, especially, right? Uh, so yeah, people started getting interested. And uh, in 2017 bull run, I had first invested in Bitcoin, but when it came to 2019 when the second button started that's when other people start also started to believe in me and that's when i started to read more about it i started researching more i said started talking to more people in the industry and soon in 2021 i finally got a chance to do something of my own uh, so there is a incubator called entrepreneur first in bangalore who what they do is they 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 interview people who are passionate about creating a startup creating founding a company and uh, they help them find a company by supporting them with a monthly salary of three, four months. There are, you know, 30, 40 people's cohort they create where people brainstorm among each other and try to create a company. I was so lucky being there. Uh, I, I went there for three months. I got more chance to, you know, actually see how a startup works. I started talking to a lot of customers. Uh, people who use Web3 technologies, not just in terms of teaching people how to do it, but also the people who are the real OGs there. And I, I started realizing their problems, like, you know, why startups exist. And uh, there was an interesting insight that I got in 2021 when the bull run hit that a lot of people are creating a lot of startups in Web3, but, uh, you know, a lot of things are just hype. The, the only valuable thing that I found in 2021 back in October, November was that uh, the communities are really important, right? Like, the good thing about crypto and web three is that there are good communities being formed. People are really supporting each other, uh, because of, uh, smart contracts, financial incentives, right? Like that is helping people love each other, helping, uh, making people help each other out of that. That may be because of an incentive, but yes, people are helping each other. Finally, people are realizing that they can generate a net positive in the society. Uh, it's not just about, you know, if, if I want to be the best, I don't want to you know, take you down. I, I want to be great. I don't want to be the, you know, good best among the lot. I, I want to be a great person. That's, that's the, that's the only positive thing, sadly, in, in the communities. Um, soon, there are a lot of startups that are still going on. And VCs at that time were funding startups left and right. We have seen now how situations have played out, uh, right? Like how FTX collapsed, how Luna collapsed, how a lot of communities, even now in Bangalore, like I'm talking about some of the premium communities here, they do not have a DAO and they call themselves a DAO. What a shame. What a shame. They People should realize that other people will get involved if you're very open about it. Like if you're not a DAO, at least come out and tell that you this is your timeline. At this time, you'll form a DAO. Till that time, you are going to do your things here. You're going to write your things here so that, you know, everyone is aware how things are going on. That, that part is still missing, but but the positive thing people are starting off. So, so yeah, uh, talking about my own startup, like I, uh, I wanted to do, do something in, um, I, I would rather not talk about it like Dan, like, I, I think that's let's park it aside for other day. I, I still want to keep it a little secret to myself. Um, I want to, you know, test it to a thousand users first and don't, then only I'll come out. I've already did it with 250 odd users so far. Uh, and I'm getting like, you know, uh, so and so feedback. So I'll get back to you hopefully uh, when when I hit hundred, when I hit a thousand. So so yes, um, yeah. Back in back in 2021 uh, Jan Feb, uh, soon I realized that the startup that I'm pursuing, I cannot do it alone. I am I I love talking to people, but uh, sadly I couldn't find a co-founder who was matching my energy, who was matching my vision. Everyone wanted to do a different thing. I have a lot of friends, but 
everyone wanted to do a different thing. Like whoever I talked to wanted to do a startup of their own. And uh, I did not find much value there. And probably they did not find much value here. It was like, you know, um, give and take kind of scenario. So again, like for the second time, my bull bear cycle repeated. I started finding new jobs. And at this time I knew I wanted to go to a crypto company. Uh, I could take that chance. So I applied in Coinbase, CoinSwitch and CoinDCX as a, you know, as a, right now there are a lot of companies out there. Luckily, a lot of startups which are doing good as well. Uh, people have good opportunities to work in Web3 if they want to. But back then uh, in 2022 start, uh, there were not a lot of great companies out there. Uh, the, these were the only three companies, you know, which I could name. Wazirx was not hiring in non-tech roles. I, I don't think even now they're hiring in non-tech roles much, right? Uh, Coinbase rejected me. I was heartbroken. That was my dream company back then. But uh, in April, uh, Luna collapsed. Uh, Coinbase started taking their job offers back. And I consider myself lucky again that I was not a part of it. Um, I, I, I joined CoinSwitch. Uh, I did not join CoinDCX, although I have a huge respect for the founders of CoinDCX as well. But uh, talking to the folks at CoinSwitch really made me feel like, okay, this is the place I want to go and I will feel valued there. I joined CoinSwitch. At that time, CoinSwitch was a very nascent company even then. Even though they had like more than 15 million users, they did not have an exchange. The exchange was not that not yet live. CoinSwitch was a broker app. Uh, we just made a very, very easy interface for people from tier two, tier three cities to buy Bitcoin with just a single click. That was an amazing thing to do. The CoinSwitch app is really brilliant for, you know, someone who doesn't know how stocks, how things like FinTech works for them. It was, uh, it was revolutionary, but uh, we wanted to move ahead. We knew that the customers at CoinSwitch have also evolved. They also want to move to a different level. They don't just want to buy and sell in a single click. Uh, not seeing how charts look like, not, you know, uh, planning their trade. So we built a platform called CoinSwitch Pro for that. We needed an exchange. Uh, and we, I, I helped build the exchange in here in CoinSwitch uh, right now. The, the main thing that we focus on is we coins as CoinSwitch app, right? The CoinSwitch Pro app that we used to call our main goal is to only list quality projects out there. Uh, what we are doing is we have a lot of quality analysts here in CoinSwitch team, and we are making sure that any coin that is not generating enough value in terms of, you know, so obviously blockchain is such an industry where all of the data is public out there. So we can clearly see which projects are doing good, which projects are doing bad, which projects do not have any customers. We constantly keep a look at it, even though we want to escalate this process, we want to, you know, do even better at it. But yes, that's what we are doing. We, we put riskometers wherever we feel that, you know, projects are not doing something, uh, project is doing something fishy, where we realize there's a huge token unlock schedule coming up. Uh, so we try to make sure that all of our customers are well aware and only invest in projects which are really good. But for people who want to trade, uh, there is, there is uh, you know, Binance has Luna listed even now. And I don't see a reason why a USTC is still on Binance but for the traders who want to speculate and make money. Hence, we launched CoinSwitch Pro. Here, people can trade on all the Indian exchanges at one platform. So we have a revolutionary platform out there where you do not have to send money in Wazirx and CoinDCX and CoinSwitch. You keep your money at a, one place. We manage money for you. And from one exchange, from one platform, you can trade on CoinSwitchX, you can trade on Wazirx, you can trade on CoinDCX. And as a retail, you can make profit out of the arbitrage opportunity out there. So here we are um, in the future, like, obviously we want to be the biggest exchange in India. We are the only exchange who are denominated in just INR pairs. We do not want to dollarize the money. We do not want people to, you know, do that hazel of converting their INR to USDT and trade and back to USDT to INR. I understand that people do not understand money and converting your INR to USDT just adds one step to it. So yeah, here we are uh, just hoping that the bull run comes back soon and uh, people make money. Absolutely. So Shubham, let me ask you this, right? Yeah. You said that you have CoinSwitch Kubeir Pro, right? Which allows you to trade on different exchanges. Yep. yep isn't, yep. isn't that operating like a fund of fund, which in the end increases the transaction fees for the end user? Um, the transaction fees is not actually increased if you look at it. So what we do is we coin switch Kubeir was a broker app, right? We already had funds on CoinDCX, on Wazirx, on Binance and the likes of that. Now at 
coin switch pro we are just allowing you to choose your own exchange as a broker we used to decide which is the best exchange for you when we just moved to a pro app we let you decide that just means that we might need more rebalances than before but that is up to us right like if you are selling 5 btc on wazirx and buying that 5 btc on coin dcx there may be some other trader who is selling 1 btc on wazirx and like doing the opposite thing so at the end of the day the fund movement is not that huge given there are uh, at present more than 500 people trading on coins to on a daily basis uh, the fund movement is really not that great like obviously our liquidity management team has been working hard there have been a lot of transaction fees involved for sure but uh, we are bearing that fees and we call it a cost of running the business so essentially you're like a market maker i'm not a not a market maker a market maker is one who is constantly quoting on both side of the books we are just allowing people to trade on wazirx and coin dcx you can call ourselves as a guy who is helping you withdraw and deposit your crypto to get you an arbitrage opportunity so so that you can do the arbitrage with one or two clicks and we transfer the funds for you okay and do you only operate with indian exchanges or do you even operate with international exchanges right now we are just operating as we speak we are just operating with indian exchanges uh, are there any plans to operate with international yeah, exchanges yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, so we do have plans to operate with foreign exchanges as well. But given uh, how high the TDS has been with the, you know, with with the, if I just deal in BTC USDT pair and spot, there is a you know total of uh, a percent extra TDS in every trade which I have yeah. to give. So right. that makes the business infeasible at the present moment. If if things go, if things get better, then obviously we would. love to do that for our customers our customers do demand that yes absolutely so shubham let me talk to you personally uh, how did you enter the bitcoin industry when did you enter what was going through your mind when you entered the crypto sure. industry sure i think um i i bought my first bitcoin in 2017 um again i i entered the market because as i said i was a future i was a derivatives trader when i started my career yeah. and uh, if if i'm sure that you know everyone in crypto has taken at least one trade uh, in an exchange and trading is very addictive it can uh, you know every trade can feel like you know this is the make or break trade a make or break trade for me um it, it is not the case but everyone feels like that now Absolutely. when i left futures first when i left trading there was still a void in me and i wanted to trade i wanted to trade like even with small amounts but i just wanted to get better better at it i didn't want to leave my trading journey at a place where i had made some losses so i left futures first at a time when i had made some losses i made mm-hmm. lots of profits in my career in my short career but while i was leaving i had made some losses i did not want to leave my trading journey there i started trading in indian uh, commodities uh, not indian commodities like i started trading in nsc bsc where i used to trade crude oil futures um but uh, you know i soon i realized that indian markets do not have enough volumes what i mean by that is like i put a stop loss once at i don't remember the exact price i think around 80 rupees i put a stop loss on crude oil i went to my theater class uh, because i was like in film making there for after an hour i came back my stop loss was at 70 rupees and it was a stop market order and i saw that my order was executed at 55 i was heartbroken i was like oh my god like okay this is what futures first was giving me i didn't realize that liquidity in canadian and us exchanges is on a different level i right. cannot expect the same liquidity in futures in crude oil futures in india yeah and i didn't know any other instrument like uh, crude oil futures was the closest that i could do absolutely i started finding something like you know i wanted to trade and there was an exchange called coinex in india q i n e x um uh, it was like really great founders back then uh, sad ending though like after the reserve bank of india's ban but uh, yeah i i got introduced to the exchange i uh, went into the market i took my first trade in litecoin litecoin was the first ever cryptocurrency trade it was trading at around 5000 and within within 3 to 4 days uh, litecoin touched 20000 I, i was like oh my god what's what's happening okay this is for real uh, so yeah that that was when i first got introduced to crypto and honestly i have also got into the market because of the money i i'm no different like i'm i'm like any other person out there i went into the market to make some quick bucks but but i also faced a lot of flames i would say when the market collapsed crazy um i lost a lot of money uh, my dear ones got stuck with a lot of money 
um but i didn't stop learning i i continued reading about because i am from a computer science background uh, bitcoin's white paper made some sense to me which might not have made sense to a lot of people uh, i i started watching movies like the the big short i started reading more about the dot com bubble and i realized okay um bitcoin is just asking me to trust you know put my trust in code and not in people and people can make mistakes right like people are emotional creatures everyone is a human and as a human you are supposed to do some mistake so bitcoin is just giving me an option of you know trusting code more than i trust bureaucrats and that's where my intrinsic love for this industry started to uh, come in absolutely um so let me ask you this question shubham as you said that you have always liked trading and you love to be a trader yep um this is the biggest dilemma that a lot of people in the crypto industry have yeah do you believe that the do you believe yourself to be a trader or a hodler and why um i i don't know honestly like yet i'm yet to reach that i have a figure in my mind okay uh, ever since i came out of futures first and i started trading bitcoin not ever since but like eventually i i i you know reached that decision i have a figure in my mind like as a trader i want to reach that figure before i can you know start doing doing things which rich traders do um so i i'm not there yet i'm still learning i'm still learning to improve my mindset to control my emotions in a way that i can profit out of the markets but like this is the sad reality that only 1% of the traders uh, actually do make fortune out of the markets like you know that's where i uh, put it before right that if you are if you have learned how to make money in financial markets you are one of the greats already you do you don't need to do anything else in your life so i'm not there yet uh i i try to force hodl my coins uh in a way that i put my coins in a staking contract i put my coins uh, where it is a force lock of an of an year or two i i have a personal uh you know uh, paper wallet which i have put in some secret places and i don't know the uh, private key for it i just have the public key i keep on sending you know some bitcoins to that address regularly so uh, right now most of my profits have still come from hodling uh, i i can't lie there even in this market even in this beer market most of my profits are from uh, hodling itself hodling good tokens you know researching really really good layer ones was the one i made good profits from but um, as a trader i am yet to prove myself so absolutely so shubham let me ask you this question as we are sitting in january 2023 we've seen what has happened in um we've seen what has happened with ftx do you think the ftx saga is a body blow to the industry um it has certainly taken industry back by a couple of years at least i would say like if if uh, ftx had not done this uh i was assuming the bull run is really close like if you look at the history the short history that i have witnessed honestly uh, i'm talking about my personal biases december has always been the month of reversals like the bull has turned bear the bear has turned bull this has been the case for a lot of years like at least 3 out of 5 times this has happened from 2017 till 22 uh yeah. till till 21 so i i would have believed like you know the markets have reversed but i cannot say that with certainty now with what has happened with ftx the regulators are taking notice and uh, it's it's a great thing that finally regulators are realizing that this technology is going to stay they cannot you know run away from it they yeah. have to they have to protect the investors they have to protect the you know the the innocent retail people who are just investing their money thinking that their money is safe but then people like sbf comes they they use their money in certain things which are not allowed like ethically not allowed i would say like even if there was no law stopping him to use customers money it was not ethical for him to do so i would say what sbf has done is has tarnished the image of of a lot of good folks in the industry um even even we face that wrath with you know very famous crypto uh, twitter twitterites of india i would not like to name them but people have been bashing us uh, left right and center saying like you know please give proof of reserves and people didn't even realize for the first few weeks these uh, you know so called intellects did not realize that giving a proof of reserve do not make any sense if you do not have the 
liabilities with you like you know what will you do if i just tell you that i have 1 billion dollars of assets if i do not tell you that my liabilities are x y amount only a proper financial audit can help you out but uh, but yes like as i said this is necessary uh, you are not a bank where rbi is taking charge and rbi is you know on the backs if something goes wrong rbi can step in and do something we do not have any such godfather so it, it's it's really bad for the industry what happened with the ftx but i would also say there is a there is a you know slight there is a silver lining in this that maybe the regulators will you know be fast at what they should have done maybe two years back maybe this would be done in the next six months from now and we will see a net positive outcome of what has happened with ftx that, that's what i believe in. so within the internet industry what we saw similar to this in 2001 with pets.com and a few other internet companies where the money was being thrown right on these companies and they had no underlying business would you from the privilege of being at coin switch kuber and, and leading uh, and and being the key decision maker would you say that what is happening in crypto industry is equivalent to 2001.com bubble and the people that do emerge out of it will become the amazons of the crypto industry going forward absolutely absolutely like i would say that not not one dot com bubble we have seen multiple dot com bubbles already in this nascent industry and uh, we have clearly seen the projects of 2017 which were there there are only a couple of projects i would say which have done really well like ethereum i would say has come out of that in 2000 before 2017 ethereum was like nothing uh, ethereum was just a normal uh, you know one of the projects that is out there no one really notice ethereum in 21 22 ethereum is something entirely different uh, you know a lot of people in africa where banks cannot reach they are the people the poor people there are able to access the the us dollars and probably uh, sometime later their own local currencies using their phones with a single click because ethereum has made it possible for anyone in the world to create their own dapps out of out of you know ethereum is like an android right like absolutely i am sure that even now when when we are seeing a lot of bus happening and maybe this contagion will continue for some time now uh, but we will see a few projects which will be the next ethereums the next bitcoins out there in the in the next few years so it is a very very good times for founders for investors to cut the noise out there to focus on really you know the real use cases of web3 and not just plug in web3 to anything that they feel important like as as you are yourself a metaverse uh, metaverse company i would say there is a strong use case these days in in metaverse in the virtual reality world uh, people know that you know the the people really enjoy gaming people really enjoy spending times on their phones a lot of times but uh, there is still no real economy out there there are still giants like facebook um who is still monetizing your your data is still monetizing your uh, you know you you chat a lot of times on whatsapp and there is billions of dollars of chat i would say stored because machine learning algorithms can really read your whatsapp chats and maybe see what kind of a person you are you know maybe create an artificial bot out of you uh, we, we have seen what chat gpt can do for us so your data is really valuable out there so i i, I would say it it's still it's there in front of us the next amazon the next ethereum the next bitcoin is right in front of us it's just a matter of time that we see what it is absolutely um shubham let me ask you this as a key decision maker within the industry a lot of people have equated bitcoin and the criticism of bitcoin is that it's too open uh, and it can be used in negative ways especially when it comes to oppressive regimes right um a lot of people have equated monero Uh, which is a private cryptocurrency as being a superior form of uh, cryptocurrency what's your take on monero versus bitcoin sure sure i think monero and bitcoin solves completely different purposes for completely different people what bitcoin does is it creates a pseudonymous identity where people can send receive spend coins like normal cash but they have an identity attached to it even though it's pseudonymous like 
you cannot link that pseudo name with your real name until and unless you you know link yourself to a kyc based exchange and i think that's where regulator are also aligning they also want such pseudonymous technology where if there is a there is a person who is doing a net bad for the society he can be he or she can be you know tracked down and suitable actions can be taken on them and i would say there are actually bad things in the in the in the world we which we do not want to do like i am strictly against uh, child pornography i am strictly against human trafficking these are the these are some things which should not be done like i i will not call myself a person who is you know believe in libertinism and i would say use minero and you know start uh, doing these things that, like this shouldn't happen so i am more of a person who believes in pseudonymity and uh, privacy which people choose to do but only up to a level where the you know the general public or the demography or the intellects you can say the the you know governing body uh, of people can probably decide what is a net good for the society and what is the net bad for the society and actually ban these kind of things which which do not do a, you know net good for the for the human civilization so i am not actually a very very big fan of uh, you know privacy focused coins but having said that i'm i'm not against them like i'm i'm not saying you we should completely ban these private cryptocurrencies out there but there should be mechanisms where we can stop these uh, criminals from from doing things which are net bad for the entire world absolutely there is there is also an alternative thought point that say for instance if you're a, a citizen in a dictatorship where you have a dictator right where you have north korea or many other such yeah. places yeah. right uh, these private cryptocurrencies could be a way to empower the citizens citizens right um so from that perspective is it fair to just ban them out right or should they be allowed to exist in a certain aspect so that those people can get um essentially the power to speak up to have a voice for themselves no sure. i think that's that's the beauty of the internet and the cryptocurrencies out there right like no one can outrightly ban anything uh, and that's the beautiful part right like if you really want to be involved you just need a computer and an internet connection and no one can theoretically stop you from from doing anything you want to do you do any level of censorship even in china people use facebook like there are uh, you know strong people sitting in the government trying to make sure that you cannot do anything but people still do it uh, people just don't come out so cryptocurrencies like monero are going to stay uh, you know there are going to be users of the tor browser and making making sure that uh, you know no one can actually so the point is no one can actually outrightly ban anything that's that's the whole point if people really want to use something they can absolutely um right shubham let me ask you this then um uh, and i know i'm not going to ask you officially to make a statement from konsich kubair but so, from the privileged position that you are sitting in do you see a future where you can trade within the metaverse where you have say candlestick charts and you're in sandbox or upland or decentraland and i don't need to go to coin switch kubair's platform i can just open up a a third party linked user interface within sandbox or upland and i can not only see the graph i can essentially feel the charts happening in real time and then uh, make a decision based on that within uh the metaverse itself that's, that's a very very dystopian thought i would say like i am i'm actually imagining the you know heightened emotions of fear and greed playing out in in front of you in in the virtual reality right like and you have to make decisions you know keeping your emotions aside even though you know that emotions are overpowering you that's a, that's a dystopian thought and i would love to see that like honestly i, I would love to see something of that sort of things happening uh i would say still far away uh, from where we are because you know to, i i am that i am of that thought school like if you really want to you know make good use of the metaverse and the related technology you need hardware as well right like you cannot do it without the required hardware um so yes i would love to see that happening but for for first i would like to see democratized hardware first like i would i would take a step back and say that we Absolutely. we need a democratized hardware for the common masses and we we are not even at you know a democratized fiat easy fiat on ramp yet so we are a long way to go there but i would love to see something of that sort happening absolutely um 
as we look at metaverse, do you think there is a use case for a 3D virtual stock exchange where all the brokers can come together and potentially form something similar to New York Stock Exchange or London Stock Exchange, but for the Web3 and crypto world where you have uh, real brokers and, and uh, we all know how trading used to happen on the trading floors back in the day, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you see that happening in the virtual world ever? Personally, I would love to see an open outcry. Like I, I, I want to be in that place in, you know, 1980s and uh, I want to see trading happening that way because that teaches you a lot of things about human emotions, which you cannot see, you know, sitting in front of your screens. You do not know what emotions the other person is feeling. Um, you know, as, when you, when you trade, when I buy and you sell, you have a perfect logic to sell at that point. You have a perfect argument. The market will go down and I have a perfect argument that the market will go up. You cannot see that in, in your computer screens. Uh, you can just, you know, have some patterns in your head, looking at the candlestick. Okay. This is what the general audience is thinking. But if you do that in an open outcry setup, that is something which will help you learn a lot of things. So personally, I would love to see such kind of a setup, not just that, like I would say, uh, what, what virtual reality can do is take us to places where we, you know, we can just imagine going in our lifetimes. Uh, not everyone is lucky to travel the entire world, but that's what metaverse can enable in, in very, very cheap prices with the right hardware, with the right designs, with the, with the right teams developing the experiences. Uh, not just trading, but you can go into the past. You can probably go into a future. You can go into, you know, various places in the world. And that's where metaverse I think is headed. That's a very, very net positive, uh, thing I would say, because people will get to experience thing. People will open up new kind of, you know, uh, mind maps because of this. So I would love to see that personally in my lifetime, hopefully. Absolutely. Um, so finally, let me ask this question to you, uh, Shubham. As Coin Switch Kuber is looking at both Metaverse and Web3, how are you evaluating both the industries? And is there any plan to carve out a niche for yourself? And if there is, is there anything you can talk to us about uh, on what your plans are? Sure. So right now where we stand, we're a very, very nascent company. Um, we want to cover as many industries as possible. If you look at how stock market started back in, I think 1800s was, uh, the, the, the first company was, I think the East India company, which used to sail ships to India and people just used to invest in ships. So back then there was just one industry, the, the ship industry where people used to invest in ships to go to India and come back with India and like others, the subcontinent bring in resources, which people can make money off. We, we are at that place right now. You know, if you look at, if you call just crypto, that is crypto, like crypto. If I make an analogy with the stocks, stocks have like at least 10, 12 different industries, more than that, uh, out there. And as an exchange, you want to cater to every single one of them, right? I don't want to exclude pharmaceutical. I don't want to exclude, you know, renewable energy. I want to include everything out there as, as coin switch. We also want to include every industry out there, whether some succeeds, whether some fails, that is not up to us, uh, but as an exchange, as a broker app, it is our duty that whatever our investors are investing in, we make sure that we do our own due diligence and we make sure that the people investing also do their own due diligence. So that's where we stand. We want to cover the entire spectrum, just taking every step, you know, cautiously. Absolutely. Um, as some of your high profile peers, such as Vazirex and Polygon and others, have moved out of India after the 30% tax that has been introduced. Why do you choose to remain in India? See, there is, there is a risk and reward of everything, right? Like as a, as a trader, uh, I can, you know, I can completely relate to the decision that CoinSwitch took of uh, staying in India. There is a risk that regulators can um, do things which are not good for business. But there is also a reward that if you work closely with the with the people making the compliance with the people regulating, then you can actually help the the regulators, the government create such laws which are favorable for the entire industry altogether. We choose to stay in India. We choose to take the hard path because we want the industry 
we want the industry to be you know better because of indian developers we all know how talented you know people in india are they, they, i would say uh, like i'm not i have not validated the source but i read somewhere 20% of the entire world's developers come out of india right with yeah. with that source of talent that we have if we just plan to go out i don't know like who will stay right like uh, we we are one of the few companies which have their uh, you know entire offices running in india we are going giving employment to currently more than 600 people uh, we want to keep on doing that we want to keep on supporting the indian ecosystem we want to help the regulators the policy makers out there in india to set the right guidelines to make sure indian investors take the upside indian people take the upside of this technological shift uh there are obviously risks attached but as a business if you look at the upside if we are only one of the few we will also have the most of the market share out there do you think 30% tax is fair i don't think it's uh, actually really fair uh, a straight 30% tax i don't think is justified there should be there should be things like uh, how it happens in uh, in traditional markets like there should be a rebate on holding your assets for longer term uh there there should be so the the thing that we are actually trying to uh, you know lobby for is the 1% tds uh the 1% tds is actually asking the indian retail to go to the black market and probably uh, when i say black market i i i i am talking about trading uh, peer to peer in binance usdt inr market uh, yeah. which which you do not pay tds on and uh, you you start dollarizing your inr and you know you're trading on an exchange which indian regulators do not have much control on so we yeah. want the uh, regulators the policy makers to understand this and uh, you know help us create a ecosystem which is profitable to them uh, reduce the tds uh, you know reduce the tax labs and take the upside you know it, it it's like talking about i have a, a gmv i have some cost it's like you're just asking me to cut costs but you're not seeing that cutting you know in if you cut cost by 10% your gmv is decreasing by 90% right and if you increase cost by 10% your gmv is increasing by 1000% so that is the real metric to look at gmv per cost right so that uh, hopefully hopefully in in the next few months uh, or next few years the taxes would change and we would see better better uh, policies absolutely shubham let me ask you this then is there a possibility that we see a coin switch metaverse soon i i i like that idea for sure i like that idea um now soon is a very related term i would say uh, for a company maybe 5 years is a soon time you know uh, a company lives more than 100 years hopefully so yeah i would love to see that happening hopefully when you do that um, you'll you'll invite us and and we'd love to experience that from coinswitch um as as you're looking at different markets right and especially within web3 and metaverse india is one of the top five markets china is there us is there um japan is there south korea is there right yep. um outside of india when when you're analyzing where to potentially grow your business which of these markets come on top of your radar see as an uh as a startup founder myself right like when i when i was researching into the market i realized uh, that apart from india the the two biggest markets that i can easily so it's an it's an idea of effort versus impact right like it's it's not just impact or effort also comes into the picture um i think the the market which wazirx also tapped as a founder myself when i was uh, researching on my own startup i felt like after india i should target indonesia i should target philippines i should target the southeast asian countries which are uh, you know really open to the new technologies very easy market to get into in terms of competition and uh, can can get us a really good revenue source um so yeah i would say south e- southeast asian countries are the ones which which are in you know with the effort versus impact analysis that absolutely um so let me ask you this shubham 
as a derivatives trader, I'm sure you're aware before you can trade derivatives, you have to sometimes many brokers or country wise, you need to pass an exam of that broker or answer a few questions so they know yeah, you're it's, competent. It's a compliance test, right? actually. So, so yeah. Shubham, let me ask you this question that when as a derivatives trader, when you're trying to trade derivatives, right? Um, a lot of brokers would uh, make you pass a compliance test, right? You would answer a few questions yep. or whatever. Yep. Um, in the light of FTX saga, yep. do you think as the industry as a whole, you should A, recognize that the reason why FTX and a lot of these rug pulls happen is the lack of the education of the user, end user, right? right? They don't know, they just get into the hype and they buy it. And a lot of times either the project is a rug pull or if that is not the case, the entire exchange is a rug pull where the founder has sort of uh, um, undertaken fraud or scam or whatever. So do you think the buck stops with the user that is not educated enough on how to interact with cryptocurrencies and true ownership of their assets? Sure. Um... I, I completely align with you here, Tan. Like, I think education is the one of the most important aspects uh, when it comes to cryptocurrency trading, when it comes to interacting with the crypto universe, Web3 uh, in general, people do not know how to uh, play safe, how to, where to hold their funds, how to interact with smart contracts. There is not enough education uh, still out there. And uh, it's, it's a duty as industry leaders that we do that for our customers. You know, the vision of coin switch, if I talk about is to make money equal for all, we do not uh, honestly want to stay at uh, crypto. We want to move to other asset classes as well. We want people to get educated about money in general, not just crypto, but money as a whole. And uh, if you look at our YouTube channel, that's where our YouTube is focused on. We mm -hmm. want to make sure that we make cross language, you know, regional languages content where people uh, you know, get to learn about a lot of things of how cryptocurrency technology works, how money works in general. So, so yes, absolutely aligned with you. Education is something which should be a mandatory thing for, uh, you know, industry leaders out there. And uh, just to uh, talk about how you said as a derivative trader, you, you give compliance tests. If you, if you go and trade on Binance, uh, right? Like even on Binance, uh, I have recently seen that there is actually a small test which you have to give give these days. If you start trading futures, uh, you have to pass that test and only then they allow you to trade futures. So that's also, a, I would say, a brilliant thing for Binance to do. And everyone else should follow such good practices, you know, whatever an industry leader is giving you. So, so yeah, completely aligned with you on the education part. People should come out, create education DAOs, you know, create incentive structures where you know, a network marketing structure kind of a thing where if I teach you and you teach someone else, I get profit because you are just educating people. Uh, and there is a huge, huge gap out there. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of uh, startup founders which maybe probably can take you and create such a, a, a educational network marketing kind of, kind of a startup out there to, to help people out. Absolutely. Um, Shubham, let me ask you this question. As we look at a lot of traditional stock exchanges, one of the main sort of aspects of that is helping new startups get listed and raise funding and go from there, right? right. Um, so as you are the head of listing and delisting at CoinSwitch, uh, yeah. let, me, let me ask you this. If I am a traditional startup and yeah. not a crypto, well, I may operate within the crypto industry or blockchain or Web3 or Metaverse, but I don't have coin related to myself because I want to be compliant with the government, right? Um, and I don't want to take that additional risk. Um, is there a path to an ICO that I can do with CoinSwitch where CoinSwitch can help me obviously go through my business plan, go through all the, all the, uh, the soundness of my business, but then help me raise funding so I can go and I can execute on the technology bit of it. I don't want to create a coin and go the speculative route. But definitely, I want to raise funding and maybe create the IPO version of a blockchain or crypto industry sort of era. Sure, sure. Um, so to answer your question, first of all, um, I, I'm not the head of listing and delisting. We are a democratized body. Uh, we have various mem members in our team. And uh, like we have at least five people who take that decision. And all of us have equal power and equal veto in terms of listing and delisting. Uh, we have made that to make sure that there is no biasness when it comes to, you know, listing or delisting a project. Uh, now coming to your question, like if you want to do an ICO, if you want to raise funds, 
uh, first of all, we have recently launched a Web3 Discovery Fund uh, under, under Coinsys Ventures. So if you are a startup who is looking to raise some money, uh, we can help you raise money in traditional style. We write small checks. We help you connect to you know big VCs out there, including A16Z. If you are really good, if we believe in you, we will help you get these connects. If you do not have them yourselves, we'll help them reach reach out to these people and raise even bigger rounds. So we are not um, you know going to we we are not helping uh, raising ICOs, but we are helping you raise regular funds through the traditional route. Uh, and not through the crypto route. We are kind of avoiding that route because we have seen how the US government has reacted to ICOs and how the Securities and Exchange Council has been reacting to tokens which they think are securities. Uh, we are uh, completely law abiding exchange and we also do not want to be in that position where we are raising funds for some uh, you know, raising, doing an ICO or an initial exchange offering, and it turns out the token or the project was a scam. We we do not yeah. want to be there. If there is any risk, we want to put in money and we want to take the risk ourselves rather than opening it to our investors, our, sorry, our customers and they investing the money. So we would go the Coinsys Ventures way and not the ICO way as of now. Absolutely. How far do you think a crypto mutual fund being launched in India is? Interesting. Um, if I talk about a mutual fund, right, like uh, the thing that comes to my mind is that a completely regulated product, right, where a financial advisor, a CA or, or CFA comes to you and advises you of what to buy and what not to buy. Uh, that will take some time, I, I assume, because for that, the policymakers have to be really, really, you know, have to have a deep knowledge about the subject. And uh, I have not seen anything in US and uh, like that's where we are in the world right like us decides financial products as of now at least like us dollar is the denominated currency so i would see something of that sort first come up in the united states uh, and then only in india and i think that's still a couple of years away just a rough guess but i think that's at least a couple of years away so we at coinsys have created actually an index called create cr8 where we take the top eight cryptocurrencies uh, we have a small mathematical formula and we try to create one index out of these top eight currencies where a person who wants to invest in the top coins without having to figure out whether to invest in Bitcoin or crypto, uh, they can just directly, you know, invest in create. So we are trying to get some regulatory certainty of how we can make people invest in create right now. It's just an index where you can track it, but you cannot directly buy. Is, is that like a small case for cryptocurrencies? It's like, it's not like a small case. It's like Sensex for stock market. We have created okay. create for crypto market. Uh, so which, so whoever are the top most INR traded coins in India, mm -hmm. we take, uh, we club that and, uh, we also like remove and add coins. A small case would be something like, you know, a small case. I don't think it removes and adds continuously, but as an index, you do remove and add coins continuously. So it's like an index. It's not, sure. a, um, uh, like basket. So. Sure. Absolutely. Um, so Shubham, let me ask you this question as, uh, decision maker within coin switch kuber where do you see coin switch kuber in the next 10 years um in the next 10 years honestly i see coin switch as one of the major platforms in india if you want to start your financial journey uh, not just start your financial journey but if you want to invest in multiple asset classes at one single place in a secure and a compliant way i see coin switch as one single stop for you without any double thoughts i do not you know, as a, as a, as a early customer, when I was, you know, taking my salary, I had a lot of places to go to that created a lot of confusion for me. And hence I never invested in anything. Honestly, I want one single place where I can just start investing my salary with one single clicks across asset classes. We want to be that one single platform in India where people do not have to think twice about investing in the most safe, secure, and uh, you know having diversified asset classes that's where i see coin switch absolutely um so shubham let me move on to the so shubham let me move on to my favorite section which is rapid fire questions um, and let me let me uh, give you a few rapid fire questions are you planning a crypto link debit card in india uh there was a thought in mind and it still is we have a spark yes Absolutely. Um, what will trigger the mass adoption of Web3 and Metaverse 
like we saw the global disease of 2020, uh, which we can't name it due to YouTube policy, creating the mass adoption of cryptocurrency, what event will trigger a similar reaction with Metaverse and Web3? If you talk about Metaverse, I would say the democratized hardware is something which will create the mass adoption of, of the Metaverse. Absolutely. Which also brings me to my next question. Do you think the future is VR, virtual reality, or AR, which is augmented reality, which you can do using your mobile phone? I think, I think it will be a mix of both. V, VR and AR will always go together. One Absolutely. cannot live without the other. Absolutely. So as you're looking at Metaverse specifically, do you think the winner is big tech or is it companies such as Sandbox or Upland or Decentraland that is going to define the future of Metaverse? Um, I think it's always the infrastructure which will play the bigger part. Uh, for now, my personal bet would be on companies like Sandbox, uh, Upland and Decentraland. That's where I'll put my money on for now. Absolutely. Um, do you think election campaigning would be something that would happen in the metaverse? No doubt about it. Like, uh, like how we see Facebook, WhatsApp, and uh, you know, Twitter being used to manipulate elections, uh, manipulate not just manipulate. I would say like uh, take advantage of those technologies. Of the technologies, the same would be happening in metaverse as well. Absolutely. What will bring e-commerce to metaverse? Fiat on ramps, easy fiat on ramps. On and off yeah. So as, as you talk about fiat on-ramp and off-ramps, is CoinSwitch Kuber working on a payment gateway that would allow that? Um, not as of now. We are waiting for uh, regulatory certainty there. So once once that is once that is clear, we would for sure love to do that. We is that on cards? Uh, not yet, I would say. Uh, like as I said earlier also, there is a spark. There is always one or the other idea going around in the company. You know, someone is working on something. So it is sure. there which people are researching on, but without yeah. regulatory certainty, we our hands are tied. Absolutely. Um, what's the future of uh, the metaverse? Is it VR headsets or is it holographic projections? Um, interesting, interesting. My, I would love to see holographic projections, uh, you know, do take the VR headsets out of the picture because that is a more human feel. Absolutely. Um, let me ask you this question. Is the global internet bandwidth fast enough for Metaverse and Web3 to exist? Uh, I'm, I'm banking on uh, Elon Musk to, you know, give us satellite internet for that. Yeah, I, 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 I am like a firm believer that even if uh, Bitcoin and other decentralized technologies come, the internet is kind of centralized. If you, you need a global internet for a global currency to operate without centralized intervention. So I am, I am banking on Elon Musk to, you know, do better at Starlink. Like he is doing absolutely amazing, but there is still a lot of improvements. Absolutely. So Shubham, are governments behind the curve when it comes to metaverse in Web3? Um, not hundred uh, percent. A little governments are a little slow, and they always have been. I would say, but uh, you can uh, already see a lot of state governments using Web three and blockchain technology to, you know, uh, for educational certificates for land deeds. So uh, governments are slowly getting there. Absolutely. Uh, as we look at United Arab Emirates, Shubham, uh, they not only have a metaverse ministry, they have a metaverse minister, and that ministry's job is not only to uh, use metaverse, but also work within the metaverse. As we also look at Israel, there is a, a metaverse uh, diplomat that is there. Do you think India is going to have a metaverse minister or a ministry soon enough? Yes, that is, I, I, I firmly believe that is going to happen in the next decade or so. Absolutely. Do you think we are moving fast enough for that? um not so fast i would say as a as a startup uh as someone working at a startup i would say not not fast enough uh, and and like obviously things might change significantly right like you don't know what what may take place in the next five years or so uh but yes not not fast enough i would say we need to we need to work a lot harder absolutely uh can can the metaverse in web3 help in aiding uh bridge social justice especially when it comes in india 
Wow, that's a that's a really you know deep deep question. I would say. Um, so honestly speaking, in India, people do need a place where you know one person can interact with the other person without knowing what you know caste they belong to, what background they belong to, and uh, that's a very interesting use case which which you just sparked in my mind. I think if you take a pseudonymous identity in the metaverse and you start talking to people without knowing who what their names are what their caste is what their financial background is that is something which can really really help our our children you know see the world as a as a equal place rather than what it is right now so i think it can play a huge role in that in that segment absolutely as india is a country of 1.3 billion people and some may argue that we are soon going to overtake china to become the most populated country in the world um let me ask you this question we all know how play to earn games have existed for a while india has an acute problem of joblessness do you see play to earn aiding in solving that uh, issue and do you think the government should sort of take play to earn not only as a fringe industry or a niche that is trying to do something but the government should also uh, try to back play to earn platforms to create employment within india sure like uh, i i have actually my own thesis on play to earn like that is one of the most interesting ideas that i am working on as an as an uh, as someone who is also you know taking part in conscious ventures uh, play to earn is something which anyone has not cracked cracked as of yet we have seen our own set of problems in axie infinity and in stepin right the economies are not that sustainable uh, these economies always need new people to step in every time i would say if you talk specifically about play to earn the games should first be fun to play and then only you should talk about earning if you are coming into a game just because of the purpose of earning then it loses the purpose of being a game so i i would say we are still very very far away from from doing anything of that sort like we first need to understand what is a better economy design when it comes to play to earn and then only we can assume later things but yes obviously governments can create campaigns like you know uh, maybe learn to earn like that is something which i really want to see going forward like if you are uh, let's say uh, you know class 5th has a state board in a lot of states so if you can give people some money uh, if they are also learning something about web3 technology give them some uh, cbdcs of 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 sort with a you know on their digital identity they get a certificate that okay this guy has actually cleared a certificate and he has that token to you know uh, get benefits of let's say free college education when he turns 18 uh, that that those sort of things are absolutely required in today's today's environment so uh, we we can see where it goes out but for play to earn to play out i would say there is still a lot of improvement required absolutely so shubham what's the role of metaverse in web3 in law enforcement um i think first of all law enforcement agencies uh, are really looking forward to learning this technology given how criminals are now very advanced and asking for bitcoin ransoms like we we see that news around very often um first of all i would say the leas are getting really proactive in you know uh, teaching themselves and recently coinswitch also did a lot of sessions in a lot of cities where we went to the law enforcement agencies offices and you know help them get onboarded into the web3 and metaverse journey um so i i actually you know understood the question the other way around uh, law enforcement has to has to learn how metaverse and web3 works in order to do something there so shubham as your stint with uh, coinswitch ventures let me ask you this question are vcs investing enough in metaverse and and uh, web3 yeah of course i think vcs are investing in every disruptive technology that uh, web3 is creating like uh, web3 is a as i said is a whole new niche and within this niche there are a lot of unexplored territories out there and uh, vcs in general are very very interested in the gamefi technology and the gamefi uh, cannot exist without web without you know metaverses uh if you are creating a game you are by default creating a metaverse out there right you have to use nfts you have to use some economies and uh, vcs are most excited about investing in 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 new uh technologies in that sort so yes we are really excited about whatever founders are doing passionately and creating a sustainable business out there not just wishful thinking but actual businesses 
which needs web3 not something you know coming out of web2 world and just fitting in web3 uh, forcefully to get funding that that time has gone like if you are a founder who are, who just wants to raise funding because of the web3 name in it that time has gone now now vcs are much more sophisticated and educated way to invest in absolutely uh, should metaverse and web3 ownership be anonymous uh it should be pseudonymous i feel it should be pseudonymous not completely anonymous there are uh, as i said there there are things which as we as a society should take care of um as i said previously like like human trafficking and you know child pornography these are the things which no human being should ever tolerate anyone else doing so come going completely anonymous we expose our uh, we expose our civilization to this threat so it should be pseudonymous not completely anonymous absolutely so shubham let me ask you this thing yeah as bitcoin is 100% supply and demand based right a wheel last year dumped 1500 bitcoins at one single time and caused uh, the price to crash right yeah do you do you then see bitcoin open to market manipulation where a wheel could massively buy or dump a big amount of uh, bitcoins in in a single uh, transaction to move the markets see every market is open to market manipulation it's not just bitcoin like even if uh, a person who is holding a lot of gold can dump the market right like uh, bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies just give you a free market out there where you can do whatever you want to there is no circuit breaker and you know th- that is actually an advantage i won't say that is a disadvantage because if you closely look at it what happened with gamestop was there were a few people who went to the back door and uh, you know closed their position while robin hood was forced for you know f- robin hood forced the users to not buy at one particular time without any warning without any um, uh, you know they just controlled they just manipulated the market not to safeguard investors they they stopped it because they wanted to bail some hedge funds out so those kind of things are not possible in a decentralized exchange those kind of things are not possible in this market so i would say that is that looks like a uh, that looks like a you know a, a misfortune or something which is bad but i would say that is actually a net good because everyone has equal access to the markets if 1500 btc are going on chain you can you can you know raise alarms for yourself you can track that on chain data create an alarm and take positions accordingly you don't have to uh, be surprised actually if you if you ask me absolutely uh well shubham we can talk for hours and hours but we know that you have other engagements let me then ask you for your final thoughts is there anything you would like to tell the viewers or the people that are maybe not in the industry or are looking at the industry how should they perceive the industry and why should people trust the industry after what has happened with ftx and uh, other other projects so so my if there is one thing that people can take away from from this interview whoever is listening to us is do not see a few incidents to define the industry if you really want to learn how cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology works you must go back and read about bitcoin first you have to have a clear understanding how bitcoin works at its core why bitcoin came and the philosophy behind creating bitcoin if you are not aligned with the philosophy of bitcoin you will never be able to take that zero and one decision of this industry you will always be afraid you will always just come in this for making money and not for learning the new way of finance that is going around we are here we are lucky to be in this era where this entire technological shift is happening where we are rewriting how finance is works and you know we always thought if we were there when banks came to the picture in the first place we would have been you know at a different place if we were there when industrialization took place we would have been a different place you are at that exact cusp in in the, in the you know in the broad scheme of broader scheme of things so please make full use of it educate yourself read more about it and don't be here just for the money be here for the technology 
be here for what is going to happen in the next 10 to 20 years. Absolutely. Well, we hope you become the JP Morgan's and the Goldman Sachs of the crypto industry. So, Shubham. funnily enough, uh, JP Morgan's office is on the seventh floor of where we work. And yesterday only I met someone in the lift and I told her the exact same thing, you know, like we want to be the JP Morgan in the next few years. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, um, well, with that, Shubham, thank you very much for joining us. This was the first episode of season two of Reading Between the Lines with Tandaman. Man. It was a pleasure to have you with us, Shubham. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Before I end this video, I will just leave the viewers with one saying that we always do. You be the arbiter of truth, the viewers of the Metaverse Street Journal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shubham. It was a pleasure to have you with us. Coming up on the next episode of Reading Between the Lines with Tandaman. Man. Yeah.